is becoming to its detriment more of a white thing without the acknowledgement of the black part of it. People will say, well, why are you calling yourselves black rock? We don't need to have it. It's just rock and roll. But there's still somehow the need to say that and make a separate definition because the mainstream of rock and roll, even though it comes ultimately out of the black church, is not hospitable to artists that don't fit this certain mold. The punk rock scene has never said to me like, hey man, like, what about you as a black person? Like, let's talk about that, you know? Uh, you know, we can talk about feminism or gay rights or animal rights or anybody, but, you know, no one to talk about race at all. This is something that's a very, very big part of the black experience in America. This starts with, you know, Delta Mississippi blues. Actually, this starts with slavery, for God's sake. You know, the 2-4 backbeat, the rhythmical underpinnings, if you will, of rock and roll. The chord structures, the, the call response, the whole building blocks of rock and roll. They start, in the black, they start in the black community, part of the part and parcel of the American black experience. We saw it almost as a birthright. You know, it was like, hey, rock and roll had black roots. It had roots in the blues, it had roots. The early pioneers were Chuck Berry and Little Richard and Fats Domino. Hendrix is the guy who was sitting on the top of the heap as far as I was concerned. And that meant in terms of speed, um, in terms of uh, his ability to uh, affect an audience, but his background was different. He played in R&B bands um, for most of his life, so he had uh, a different background than some of the white players. Suddenly, rock and roll was was becoming this this visual thing where it was the white guys with the long hair replacing you know the Chuck Berries and the, the the guitar slims and the Ike Turners. I think a lot of people thought rock somehow connoted white. Rock and roll stripped of blackness if you will. Now there are guys in suits telling me well it's gonna be hard for us to market you image-wise because, well, you don't quite fit the image, but they don't even know what that image is because it's all now been manufactured into a, a separation thing because, well, they don't know what rock and roll, it's a white thing. It was almost a political statement unto itself. Just like, hey, we're, we're a black rock band. So that's where basically where Afropunk came in. Like, I was like, I want to kind of expose punk rock for what it is, you know, and, uh, and hold it accountable. We're talking about reclaiming the right to rock. It's not about the musicians reclaiming. We've always had the right. When is the audience, the black audience, going to reclaim this right to appreciate rock? Do you know what I mean? And, and why don't they? They are equally as important. There is, they are equal, there is equally as viable. And also, they're equally as necessary to the survival and the evolution of this as a music form. <laughs>